Hockey fans, are you ready to brave the wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Brave the Wild is available on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Double Twist, and of course, probably many others, I'm sure, that just kind of branch together. They all work together with the RSS feed. Happy Thanksgiving. It's been a tradition for quite a while now that I tend to record Brave the Wild on Thanksgiving. And once again, wonderfully, the lawn cleanups did finish. My 25th season of lawn cleanups has come to a close, so expect weekly Brave the Wild shows from here on out. Or at least I would hope so. Uh, Fridays or Saturdays, I'm still kind of debating on that. Fridays or Saturdays. It, it had been Saturdays. We'll see. It might move to Fridays and I'll inch Timberwolves explosion back to Thursdays. We'll see. That's what I'm thinking about because, I don't know, maybe it just works better that way. Uh, anyhow, though, once again, a th- another Thanksgiving is here. And, well, in this case, the Wild have played five games since the most recent show. And, unfortunately... Things have turned a little bit. Uh, the Wild are getting a little bit sloppier defensively. The goaltending's not been as great. Uh, it was not bad in Chicago, I'll tell you that much. Ottawa, that was kind of a mess last night, but the Wild still won. The Washington game, boy, the Wild just got their butts kicked in that game. And, uh, well, we'll just uh, have to kind of go as is. The Wild 2-3 and three since the last show. <laughs> I won't review every game in detail per se because it would be a very long show with five games, but, well, I'll review them a bit, I suppose, <laughs> especially the earlier ones. But, I mean, the long, the more recent ones, I'll probably get a little bit more into detail for the sake of time and all that and also for the sake of interest of the show as we get into the uh, two most recent uh, games, unfortunately. Buffalo, oh, God, unbelievable loss there. The Wild looking good, could not finish, basically couldn't shut the door. <sighs> Boy, interesting week for Matt Dumba, scoring goals like crazy. He's at 10 now on the season, unbelievable, uh, but then you get the defensive lapses. It's the Dumba giveth and the Dumba taketh away, or give and take with Dumba, whatever it is. Miko Koivu has been outstanding. Hopefully he can maintain that during the course of the season and have another year like he had about two years ago, two and two and three years ago. Those were two awesome seasons for Miko Koivu. As again, he is in the uh, <laughs> the final two years. Again, he's in the uh, he's he's in his two year extension. So, final two years remaining on his uh, extension, we'll say. Minnesota Wild unlucky against Washington on, on the thirteenth of November, five to two loss. And I don't know, this team just does not match up well with Minnesota at all. Um, Washington just always beats the Minnesota Wild. It just is what it is, and it's ex- extremely frustrating. A five to two loss, just a spanking. Dmitry Orlov getting his first goal. Tom Wilson getting his first goal. Andre Barkovsky getting his second goal. It's like, what's going on? And or- Orlov had his second goal uh, in the game. He had two goals in the game. And then finally, a familiar face and a guy who always tends to score against the Wild at some point, TJ Oshi. Dumbo only his sixth goal of the season. And to think that he's at 10 just, just now on the 22nd, November 22nd, I mean tells you how hot he's been in the goal scoring category the assist numbers haven't been so great but Matt Dumba awfully crazy right now Marcus Foligno I thought had a really nice week uh, he got hurt a bit in the Blackhawks game but he played again so there was no call up uh, questions were asked who would you call up if Marcus Foligno was out for for a little while I would call it Matt Reed I guess at the end of the day you look at all the different possibilities and a guy who'd probably fit that role well, it's Matt Reed, um, if you have to call up somebody. And of course, uh, Hendricks, the other Matt, would be the guy probably getting the minutes, though. We'll, we'll see. It'd be between Reed and Hendricks at that stage for Marcus Foligno's role on the fourth line. Uh, love the way Foligno has played this season, though. Absolutely awesome. He had some great scoring chances. Oh, God, unbelievable. <laughs> he totally had one against the Blackhawks. A spectacular steal, but Crawford, again, just dominant, and that's unfortunate. I don't really want to say a whole lot about this Washington game. It just was, you know, it is what it is. I mean, they outplayed the Wild in a big way. Uh, Once again, Washington kind of struggling, not doing so great, kind of in the wild card, kind of below the wild card. They actually would have missed the playoffs if the season ended before Minnesota and Washington, uh, the game there. And, well, they're, they're third in the Metropolitan now, so... Minnesota always seems to get the Washington Capitals rolling. I Again, I always bring this up. A few years back, Ovechkin was having like his quietest season ever. It was weird. It's like he only has 10 goals or something like that, and then he gets a hat trick. All one-timers. Uh, just rifle shot, quick release, all that. Wild unable to keep up with the quick passing of Backstrom and such, and it was just was, was what it was. And boy, ah. But uh, only one major familiar face. I mean, Orlov is a name. We, we know who Dmitry Orlov is, of course. But TJ Oshi is the guy that usually tends to score against the Wild. He's the second most likely guy to score against the Wild. And Ovechkin did not score 
in this game, and yet the Wild lose 5-2, to two, and it's their first regulation loss in a very, 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 very long time in uh, XL Energy Center. Not counting the playoffs, mind you, because <laughs> the Wild did lose a regulation game in the playoffs. Yes, in the XL Energy Center. But, um, yeah, we'll leave that as is. A 5-2 to two loss, disappointing, and Miko Koivu ended up getting two points in the game. He was a definite bright spot, and he's been a bright spot this whole week, quite frankly. And again, Dumba also adding the second goal of the game and Quavo assisting on it. So Quavo two points in the game, a goal and an assist. Let's just move quickly off of this depressing game, unfortunately, there. Um, much more entertaining game. It's like, remember how I was like, the Wilds suddenly don't play well against Vancouver. Well, they did in this one. 6-2 to two shellacking of the Vancouver Canucks on the 15th of November, Thursday the 15th. Six goals in the game. That's pretty amazing. Charlie Coyle getting his third goal. Coivu getting his fourth. That was great. And Niederreiter, all guys are just starving for goals. And, and Eric Stahl. All four, that's four guys right there starving for goals. Uh, my new favorite Vancouver Canuck outside of Brock Besser, Bo Horvat, was able to get his 10th goal of the year on the power play. Fun game for Minnesota. Just dominated throughout. Just an entertaining overall night. Uh, ultimately got 29 shots on Bachman. Only 13, I mean, only only 23 were stopped. All six of them went against the poor guy. Save percentage under 80. Can you imagine that? <laughs> under 800 or 80, whatever you want to say. Richard Bachman. So, again, that's with Nilsson out and back. Uh, Markstrom was not in net. So, it's like basically their third goalie in their organization. Suddenly, the Vancouver Canucks, after a blazing hot start, have dropped all the way down to 10, 12, and 2. So Vancouver, after that awesome start and how scary they were, looking like a completely different team. Uh, younger brother of Mikhail was the other Vancouver Canuck to score in the game, Marcus Granlund. So good for him, obviously. I'm cheering for him. I wouldn't mind him coming to Minnesota someday through free agency or a trade or something. Only his fourth goal of the season. But Zucker, you, you could argue everybody but Matt Dumba with his seventh bleeping goal as a defenseman. That's unbelievable and outstanding. And, and Brown and Fair, with guys who are always starving for points, able to get assists on that one. But uh, this was definitely a game of guys starving for points, starving for goals. Uh, Quavo's not starving for points, but only his fourth goal of the year. And that's still what, what he's at at this point. But still an awesome week for Quavo. Another multi-point game in this one. Coyle only third goal of the year. And it's like, same old story. The guy never scores. Uh, the guy never shoots. The guy is pretty much, he's just a gritty player and a nice guy. And that's it. And you expected a lot more from a guy with his skill set and, of course, his draft position in the first round. But Coyle just is not, not going to be that guy. He's just not. And I don't understand it. A guy that does constantly shoot is Dumba, of course. But, again, he uh, and he takes so many chances. It comes back and burns him many times. And it didn't, on all three goals, you could say, against the Blackhawks, one way or another. He had a Brodeen-type mistake on the empty netter in the Blackhawk game. We'll get back to that in a minute. But, ugh. A Brodeen type of an error on that one with a uh, poor, uh, a bad pass, basically, that led to the empty netter. But uh, generally, it's the positioning by Dumba. He'll kind of gamble, go after one guy, and leave the other one open. Some of them, you can't fault him, though, if it's two-on-one. It kind of is what it is. But when it's a situation when there's already somebody there, what, do you, what are you doing? That type of situation where Dumba leaves his, his guy wide open and kind of almost double teams the the man with the puck. Pretty pretty. Pretty disappointing there, and that's where generally when you see the uh, <laughs> you, see, you see the thermometer with Bruce Boudreaux turning awfully red at the top of his head. <laughs> Seen it many times in that case, but uh, this was not a game where you saw that all too much. Uh, entertaining, fun, chill night for the Minnesota Wild, where they just scored like crazy and they took advantage of their opportunities. And guys that needed points got them, and that's great. Luckily, through all this, the Wild still in second uh, place in the Central Division despite losing three games in regulation this week, unfortunately. Uh, Dubnik was in net and stopped 25 of 27. Koivu, ultimately, just an awesome game again. A great week for him. Uh, we'll continue to move on now. The Buffalo game Saturday night, the 17th of November. Whew, just finished up lawns uh, during that day. Very busy day, freezing cold in the evening. Buffalo's third place in their Atlantic division. They are 14 and 6 right now. Buffalo's real, boy. They're the real deal. The annoying part is the guy that scored the game winner. The also annoying part is the Wild were playing great against this team in the first period. And then they just kind of could not finish them. They could not put them away. Buffalo was coming off a back to back. You figure, okay, you're up 2 0, make it 3 0. God help us, maybe 4 0. And it just never came. And it never came. And it never came. Uh, Parisi and Dumba both getting their eighth goals of the season. Dumba on the power play and Parisi uh, 
taking advantage of a turnover and finishing there for his eighth goal of the season. Gotta love Parisi, how he just is tenacious in that... He's tenacious in the uh, the other team's zone, and boy, he just does a fantastic job getting close to the net, and he is completely the Parisi of old. He's not afraid to be close to the net. He's not out in the flank like he was the last couple of years when he was a completely different player, and basically a guy who you figure he's third line at best, and that's all he is, and boy, he's top six again, and that's for damn sure. <sighs> Rasmus Dahlin, huge super prospect, playing with uh, Pominville and Eichel, he was able to get his second goal of his career. Jake McCabe, ended the uh, drought for Buffalo in that first period. So he had put Buffalo on the board. The second period, there were so many chances back and forth, but, oh my goodness, Allmark was unbelievable in the entire game. The Wild had so many chances to put Buffalo away, but Allmark just shut the door. Linus Allmark, he had his, he had his nookie blankie with him, and just uh, Linus, I know, I'm sorry. But he was uh, outstanding throughout the entire night, ultimately stopping 37 shots. Uh, try opportunity after opportunity, the Wild had to put this bleeping game away, and they just could not do it, and the frustration was mounting, and Buffalo just kept chipping away and chipping away, and they would get their opportunities, and ultimately, they would finally get it going. <laughs> Rasmus Dolan, more than halfway through that third period, tied it up, and you figure, oh boy, oh boy, this, this, we're still going to finish though, right? We'll be okay. And then you get Pominville, the craziest angle ever, a backhand shot that just somehow found its way past the post, past Dubnik, in between the post and Dubnik, which would have been Dubnik's right side. Uh, oh, man. Mm, that was a uh, heartbreaker, to say the least. Mm, I don't know how that puck found that angle. I mean, great play by Pominville. It was his ninth goal of the season, which is a huge number, considering how Pominville dropped off the last four years or so, year by year by year. I remember last year he started off fantastic with Buffalo and then quickly dropped off. And then I mentioned that going into this game. And it's like, of course his hot start isn't going to last. Well, it continued into this game and he ended up delivering with a minute and a half remaining. The Wild unable to score. Of course, you had to go empty net, but luckily you didn't give up an empty net goal. Not that it matters on, in the win-loss column, but uh, if you don't score yourself with the extra attacker... And the Wild end up losing 3-2 to two in a game they just could not put the Buffalo Sabres away. And again, don't look now. Their third place in the Atlantic are the Buffalo Sabres. They're 14-6-2, like I just said. They're a deadly, dangerous team. And wow, I'm. it's hard to believe. But then again, when you look at all their prospects, and plus the good goaltenders they have, Linus Allmark is a pretty good goalie. And Carter Hutton is a really good goalie. And Jeff Skinner was a fantastic free agent acquisition. Sam Reinhardt is getting better. Eichel's gotten better. Kyle Oposo's Kyle Oposo. And Johan Larson's Johan Larson. <laughs> and just wait until Casey Middlestad gets going, as he has not gotten going yet. He's been very quiet so far with Buffalo. But when he adjusts and he catches up to the NHL, the, the pace of the NHL and such, and he's able to start showing the flash we know he has. Whew. Yeah. Buffalo's a, a good team. They might be uh, a force to be reckoned with for many years in the Eastern Conference. And just two years ago, you would have been like this. <laughs> yep, upon hearing it, you would have reacted that way. You're not reacting that way now, and the Wild aren't either. Um, Buffalo did a hell of a job in a back-to-back -back situation when they were down 2 nothing, and they finished the, finished the deal. And More power to them. It sucks losing, but more power to them, I guess. <laughs> it just kind of is what it is there. you got to just move on from that one into Chicago. Back-to-back -back for us. Now we get to be the back-to-back -back team who, now there's a guy named Corey Crawford back in that. Remember when he got to go against Cam Ward and it was all, all was right with the Wild and all that? All was right with the Wild. Cam Ward and the Blackhawks are, they're just a shell of themselves and all that and you still got Kane and Taves and they're dangerous but eh, it's, it's not the same team anymore. Duncan Keith is way past his prime. Seabrook is, eh, he's barely, I don't know. I mean, he's, well, he's not the same guy, let's just say. And Coach Quinrill got fired the past week or two. And you got a guy that's definitely younger than me behind the bench. He looks like he's younger than half the team. And he probably is, to be quite honest. 32-year-old <laughs> coach. Okay, well, the uh, Blackhawks are yours, buddy. And uh, good luck. And, well, we'll see what happens. You get some wily veterans who've won three Stanley Cups. You got some uh, stars who are getting a little older. But they're not that old. They're, year, they're several years younger than Parisian suitor. At least four or five years younger still than Parisian suitor. So, hey, I mean... It ain't over till it's over for them, I suppose. You still got Crawford. But uh, it's a tough task there. 
Of course, the LA Kings fired their coach, and the St. Louis Blues fired their coach. They hired the uh, they hired one of the assistants to be interim, and the Edmonton Oilers fired their coach. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, McClellan is gone. Todd McClellan is no longer the coach of the Edmonton Oilers. He had some success with the Sharks, but never got it done with the playoffs. He's had minimal success with the Edmonton Oilers. Got them a really good record and no success in the playoffs when he had that good record a couple of years ago. And now the head coach is a guy who's a name that's been around forever. And it's not Joel Quinville. Of course, the uh, team that would hire Joel Quinville at this point would have to pay the Blackhawks $3 million, too. So still, a, that would be a situation there. Quinville's still demanding a ton of money. Uh, obviously, he's still got two years remaining on his contract, and it ain't cheap. And again, the Blackhawks would demand $3 million from the new team uh, that would hire Joel Quinville. So I guess Quinville's not going to Edmonton at this stage. But Ken Hitchcock is. Ken Hitchcock is the coach of the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, Ken Hitchcock, the guy who's retired more than Brett Favre. More times than Brett Favre. He's retired more times than, eh, I don't even know, Dominic Hasek, who kept saying he's retiring, basically, and he kept coming back, and <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, Mike Madonna, kind of, we thought he was going to retire. Well, well, Joe Maurer did. <laughs> Joe Maurer meant it. Mike Madonna looked like he was going to retire. Same type of thing coming out with the uh, Minnesota, uh, Minnesota North Stars jersey with the N, not the Stars, N Star jersey, the classic one. And then he came back with Detroit, his hometown. So I guess you can't resist the hometown draw. Anyhow, let's talk about the Blackhawks. Now that I got all that off my chest, the Blackhawks are still six in the Central. They're not doing that good, but, well, they beat us. And Crawford was the same old thing. Opportunity after opportunity, including a nice strip by Marcus Foligno right in front of the net. He even made a nice move, and it looked like he got it, but no, not meant to be. Matt Dumba did not have a good game, and ultimately he was uh, broken up from Ryan Suter, moved to, moved to the second pairing with Brodeen and Spurgeon back up with uh, Suter, which was the traditional uh, duo in the past. Dumba and Suter have had tons of success, but of course Suter, of course, you can imagine the frustration with some of Dumba's defensive breakdowns. Suter kind of the consummate professional, even though you know, even though there's <laughs> even though he's like let's just say he's in the uh, owner's ear with a lot of things over the time over time because well he knows the owner very well they worked together in Nashville for the whole time they were both in Nashville yeah that's a long time so let's just say he's had a little say on certain coaches getting fired and GM getting fired and stuff so um, but he's a consummate professional on the ice. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that as is. You can kind of see what I'm hinting at there. Interesting uh, conspiracy going on there, but um, over the years. But well, that's not the first time that's happened. Welcome to welcome to corporate life. Basically, that's basically what that is. To the Blackhawk game for crying out loud again, a three to one loss. I hate it. I hate losing to this team. I hated the defensive breakdowns, the, the poor positioning by Dumba. Going after one guy, ignoring Jonathan Taves on the back door. Jonathan Taves did end up getting a power play goal. It's 10th of the season. Jonathan Taves always scores against the Wild, or Patrick Kane does, or they both do. But one way or another, one or, one or both of them will find their way uh, lighting the lamp at some point. Brandon Saad, old Evil Otto himself. Remember the guy I used to call Evil Otto because of that smirk he would have, and he would try to draw people into penalties and he got Clayton Stoner pissed off and drew a penalty from him and that was pretty funny. Brandon Smy, Brandon Saad with the smirk. He embarrassed Dumba. He just blew by the guy. Um, there was a puck just sliding down the ice in the Blackhawks direction. Loose puck. Just muscled past and blew past Dumba. Embarrassing play there uh, for Matt. Saad was all by himself and Stalock didn't have a chance. Stalock who's been outstanding in his goals against averages really, uh, wow, his his goals against average has been outstanding, to be quite frank. Uh, he's, his goals against average right now is better than Dubnik's, if you can believe that, especially after Ottawa's game last night, the Ottawa game last night, with all those goals allowed again. But uh, Stalock's goals against average has improved greatly after being so mediocre. Uh, ultimately, though, the Blackhawks win the game. Brandon Saad getting the game winner, to be to be honest, that's what it was. Uh, Zach Crazy, another power play goal. Very, 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 very close to the net and is able to finish, thank God, there, his ninth goal of the season. Zach Parisi is on course for about 73 points, 34 goals on the season. That sounds like the Parisi, not, not, you know, just a couple of years ago with Minnesota when he was scoring hat tricks and such. Uh, Dominic Cohen would end up wiping the game over with the empty netter late. Again, Stalock only allowing two of these three goals, so that definitely helps his goals. He is average, but unfortunately a loss. 
for Alex Stalock. Ah, oh, Dumba. And Dumba was, yeah, again, a poor pass by Dumba, which ended up leading to this goal. It was intercepted. Kind of a cross ice pass. Not the wisest thing you ever saw, especially when there's nobody behind you and there's no goalie in the net. What are you doing trying to do a cross ice pass in that situation? And that's why Dumba is where he, that's why Dumba got moved a bit. Uh, he responded nicely with a couple of goals, but you know, he was also beat in a you know beat on a break as well. But I don't know, a break is a break. Yeah, I can't get too mad at him when in that situation. Just like when Suter's kind of left all alone at times too. You can't get mad at a guy when it's two on one. So it's just he happened to be on the ice in that one. Uh, in this case, Dumba a factor in all three of Chicago's goals here. A big factor, to be quite honest. Um, very frustrating. Dumba not getting in front of Brandon Saad. Just kind of... I'm not sure what Dumba was thinking there. I'm not... I'm not I, honestly, I'm not sure what, what that was all about. But uh, it was pretty disappointing, to be quite honest. <sighs> and, yeah, that's what led to what it led to. Let's just move on. The Ottawa game. Wild, crazy, fun but Ottawa almost tied this. I mean, Ottawa did tie this up and almost won the game, for crying out loud, until the Wild finally finished it. Things looked so easy, so chill. You had a 3 nothing lead. Ottawa starts chipping away, this and that. Uh, Erickson Eck almost had a goal, but that was blown off. And literally a couple of seconds later, Erickson Eck helped Jordan Greenway. So Eck still got a point out of it. Unfortunately, he doesn't get a second goal, but he does get a second assist. Only three points on the year. For all three people, I mean, Greenway getting his third goal of the season, so that's good. He's moving his points up a little bit there. Jonas Brodeen with only his fourth assist on the year, but again, solid defensive play, despite some lapses here and there, which everybody does. Uh, Dumba with that rifle one-timer on the power plate. Can't go wrong with that. The dumb bomb, which apparently he doesn't like. He was uh, asked by, I forget who it was now. Was it Kevin Fulness? I believe it was Kevin Fulness. Yeah, it it might have been Matt Reed, but I know it was Kevin Fulness during the game. I was actually listening on the radio as I was watching it uh, against the Blackhawks. The other or, no, it wasn't the Blackhawks. Buffalo Sabers on Saturday night, and Matt Dumba. Because during the break, I like to listen on the radio. They said, "Oh, we we call it the Dumb Bomb," and he said, "Ah," uh, and then they said, "We'll work on it." So I guess he doesn't like Dumb Bomb. So for those of you out there that like to post that, apparently he doesn't like it too much, and that's too bad. He didn't sound like he hated it, but he sounded like it was, eh, you know. So that's that's a bummer. I I wish he did like it, but I guess I don't blame him. Dumb Bomb. I don't know. <laughs> Eric Stahl. Able to score against the Eastern Conference Club again, which is nice. His seventh goal of the season. That's helpful. That was a very nice goal, by the way. A, uh, well, it wasn't a great goal, but he finished the job in a situation where, well, he had to he had to do what he had to do there, basically, where getting the puck on net, doing the best he can, directing it into the net, despite the fact he couldn't get all, all of his stick on it, but was able to finish. And right as Greenlay was saying, <laughs> Greenlee said it, and it happened. The Wild again up 3 nothing, midway through that, that, that second period. Right as Greenlee was saying, hey, you know, you're dominating right now, you're doing well, but you don't want to ease up and let, uh, let Ottawa back in the game is basically what he said, as I'm paraphrasing. And he saw a little sloppy play happening, and then all of a sudden, Ottawa's out on the break, and Chris Tierney just goes right around, well, Dumba, you could say. He kind of was around Dumba on that one. Dumba's just magically on the ice every single time someone scores, isn't he? But Chris Tierney, the former San Jose Shark, which again was part of that uh, Eric Carlson trade. Um, boy, unbelievable. Uh, there it was. and <laughs> yeah, That was disappointing. Third goal of the year. Matt Dumba got his 10th goal of the season. 10th goal. November 21st. 10th goal. This was again last night. Friday the 21st, or Wednesday the 21st of November. Tenth goal of the season for Matt Dumba, which is insane. It's tied for the lead and on the, on the team right now. Uh, outstanding overall for him. Uh, just blown away. Him and Granlin leading the team in goals, blown away. And again, he would be on course for. Let's let's look at uh, let's look at this up again. I, I had it and I, lo- I put it away. There we go. He's on course for fifty six points, thirty seven goals. I don't think he's going to score thirty seven goals. Twenty though is extremely likely at this point. I do think he. I do think Dumba, Dumba's assists pile up because again, just putting the puck on net, somebody might deflect it, somebody might get a juicy rebound, this and that, especially with that type of a shot. 
Somebody might get a juicy rebound, and again, the deflections. He's gonna, his assists are gonna catch up. Dumba will get 50 points again. He's on course for 56 at this point. 37 goals. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That'd be pretty cool, but uh, I do think Dumba will get another uh, career high in points. He will get more than 50 this year, and it's uh, pretty amazing. It's too bad his defensive lapses are what they are, but heck, even uh, Brent Burns used to have that as well, and he's a 60, 70 point defenseman. So, you can't argue with that. Uh, Ottawa, after that Dumba goal, the dumb bomb, and I will still call it that, I guess, for now, until he uh, says, hey, brave the wild, knock it off. Jordan Greenway was able to get his fifth assist, and it coils eighth on the dumb bomb. That made it four to one. I'm sorry. Again, guys starving for points, but Greenway, okay, he's at eight now, so Jordan Greenway is quietly creeping up the creeping up the ladder a little bit. Eight points, so that's good. He's doing better than... Uh, He's doing better than Eric Tanak. I mean, you can't argue with that. He's He is producing a little bit, Greenway. He is, ever since that little tiny stint in uh, Iowa where he had a hat trick in his first game and an assist in his second game. Four points in two games for Mr. Nope, five points. He had two assists in his second game. <laughs> I remember that. Five points in two games. Greenway, like, superstar level at the AHL level, at least at the beginning. He's probably pissed off and say, hey, I want to go back up to Minnesota. And he's representing... He is, uh, to be quite honest. Eight points isn't that bad for a guy that's basically a rookie at this stage still. Uh, Thomas Chabot, Christian Jaros, and Colin White able to tie the game up. Unbelievable. In a fairly short period, in about a 12-minute period there, those guys all kind of joining up together. Minnesota getting sloppy. Minnesota getting lazy. Minnesota, I don't know, just getting too comfortable, getting too fat and happy. Uh, Eric Stahl was able to finish on a one-timer from Zucker. Beautiful feed from Zucker. A grand than like pass. Kind of a centering pass from uh, Zucker. Stall. Basically, yeah, it was a one-timer. And he was able to finish oh, with about six minutes remaining in the game. That was, uh, whew, thank God. And then Zach Parisi fed, fed Koivu, who had the net all to himself. He could have got his fifth goal, but unselfish play. I love what Quaver was done, and that, that's nice, getting his 15th assist. You're still getting a point, and that's Quaver's thought process. Eric Fair, a guy who's, you know, obviously works his ass off, and he got his third goal on that on that play with the empty netter, making it 6-4. to four. Very happy for Eric Fair there, and he, did, he wasn't celebrating or anything. He's like, okay, thank you, basically. Third goal of the season. Eric Fair works his ass off. Nine points on the season. I'm happy with Eric Fair. He's a nice fourth-line center, and Quite frankly, he's been more productive than Matt Cullen was at this point last year. So, <laughs> And he's also about 10 years younger than Matt Cullen. <laughs> 42 to 32 there. Eric Fair is not as old as he looks. Eric Fair looks like he's 38. He's 32. He's seven years younger than me. Yikes. I, I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting really old, man. I'm still three years younger than Matt Cullen, though. Which is really funny. Cullen with Pittsburgh, of course. We'll talk about him when we play Pittsburgh, I guess. Um... Nice win, I guess. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's nice that we won, but irritating. Irritating. I mean, you almost gave it right back to him. Like, Ottawa's the new Buffalo Sabres, basically. And how Ottawa used to have a lot of really nice, talented players on their team. And, you know, lots of nice forwards. Of course, a lot of them getting really old, you know, got really old. Daniel uh, Alfredson and all them guys that I've talked about over my 10 years doing Brave of the Wild. Of Alfredson, other guys, you know. Obviously, we don't go back to the we don't go back to the Alexi Yashin days or anything, but that's way back. <laughs> that would have been kind of cool if I was doing Brave of the Wild that long ago. But uh, <clears throat> still, uh, <laughs> Alexander Dag, yeah, right. He was <laughs> he, he was at Minnesota, not Ottawa. Ottawa was the early '90s, man, with uh, Alexander Dag. But uh, yeah. Ottawa and Buffalo have basically switched places because years ago, remember how good Ottawa was? Years ago, I mean, heck, a couple of years ago even, just two years ago, they were an Eastern Conference uh, finalist against Pittsburgh. Of course, they did not fare well in that series, but nice little underdog story. And remember Andrew Hammond also, a big part of a, a pretty successful uh, regular season for Ottawa during Dubnik's nice run as well that same year, that 14-15 season. That was fun. Dubnik and Andrew Hammond. Now they're on the same team, but poor Hammond. He's in the AHL, and he's doing okay. We'll talk about him in a minute. Nice for the Wild to get the win, but, oh boy, sloppy. And At least they finished it, though. Jeez. Oof. Buffalo proved you can't do that with those guys, though. And they finished their job, and their goaltending has been a huge, huge difference for that team. And, of course, the young guys getting one year older, one year wiser, and one year better. And 
That's why Buffalo is what they are. And I enjoyed talking about them. I enjoyed previewing them going into this show also. So we'll see. I'm kind of a closet fan of them, I guess. I'm not going to buy any merchandise, but I'm a fan of them in terms of I like what they're doing. Good job, basically. It's kind of like one of those. It's a it's an out of the way for the Buffalo Sabres. So... Rambling aside, let's pass out the awards, the Neil Broden slash Mike Madano Award for <laughs> this show. It's going to go to Koivu. What an awesome week for Miko Koivu. I love when he plays like this. I wish I wish he could sustain it. Some years he sustained it for pretty much the whole year. Again, two, three, two and three years ago, he was like this the whole year. Just consistent, solid, setting other players up and, and occasionally scoring and just doing a hell of a job. I, I, I love when Koivu plays like this and I hope he can keep it coming. I really do. Uh, good job by Miko Kuiva. Well, well played. The James Shepard Memorial, the disappointment of the week. I don't know. I mean, Dubnik did not have a good game against the Ottawa, uh, Ottawa Senators. You can't get mad at Dubnik in the Buffalo game. Uh, that freaking lucky goal by Fominville. There was some luck involved in that. I mean, skill, yes, but luck too. And, you know, sometimes luck is better than skill. Being lucky is better than being good, and that was part of that there. It was kind of a combo there. I'm not giving it to Dubnik. Dumba was so outstanding offensively. His defense was so damn disappointing. It's like, you know, Koivu's getting the sole possession of the Madano Broughton Award. But it's going to be like Madano Broughton Award, I think. We'll see what happens. Uh, But uh, I want Dumba to kind of get like a second place award for that. But he's going to also get the James Shepard. As, as again, as good as he was, he was super disappointing. Also, it's it's crazy. I mean, he is definitely a polared, uh, po- polarizing player on the Minnesota Wild. What a long first segment! So, there it is. The awards are passed out. My rambling is over. I love talking about this team. I think you can tell, and I like talking about the NHL also. So, with that, <laughs> that's it. Segment number one is done. We'll come back, preview three more games, look at the prospects, and call it a day. And happy Thanksgiving. <music> back here on Brave the Wild, segment number two. Going to look at the upcoming three games, look at the prospects, and wish you a happy Thanksgiving. So let's get rolling here. Thanksgiving of 2018, anyway, if you're listening years in the future. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe you're curious, like some spectacular event happened for the Minnesota Wild around this time, and this was the championship season, and this is when things really started taking shape, because the Wild defeated Winnipeg, Arizona, and Columbus, and that run started that led to a Stanley Cup. Well, hopefully that is what's going on. Tomorrow, the 23rd and Black Friday. Ugh, I hate that. <laughs> I hate I hate it. But let's stay off the topic. Matinee game, I hate that too. But, well, the Wild can win matinee games. They beat St. Louis. They beat St. Louis before. Um, so I think the Wild can win a matinee game. Three in the afternoon. Hopefully. <laughs> Winnipeg Jets in XL Energy Center. It's a tough matchup. We all know who the Jets are, what they're capable of. We know how dangerous they can be. Oh, boy. Yep, they're in third place in the Central Division, two points behind the Minnesota Wild, and the National Predators are five points ahead of Minnesota for first place in the Central Division. Chicago, St. Louis way at the bottom. Dallas is only four points behind. Wow, Colorado's only two points behind, so don't 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 get your playoff tickets just yet. Unless, well, you want to reserve seats for it, but Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, Connor Hellebuck is the goalie, of course. 2.9 goals against average. They're giving up goals this year, but they're scoring goals. Are the Columbus Blue Jackets? No, the uh, Winnipeg Jets. I almost said Columbus. We're playing them later. I get these teams mixed up because they're, I guess, their color scheme. I don't know. And they're kind of similar. They're tough. They're kind of a tough, rugged team that can score. Yeah. Kind of that. They're very similar that way, actually. Well, well, usually well goaltended, but Connor Hellebuck's number is not good this year. Just, just I mean, he's he's only at point nine oh nine in the save percentage, but the backup has been fantastic. Laurent Brassard has been awesome. Um, he's three and one, one point six five goals against average. No shutouts for either goalie, surprisingly. Only five games for Laurent Brassard, and if he's in net, well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I like our chances. 
I don't know. Uh, Dubnik will definitely be in net for Minnesota. Hopefully he'll have a better game than he did against the uh, Ottawa Senators. Maybe Stalock will be in net, but I doubt it. Winnipeg 3-2 and in their last five. They beat New Jersey 5-2. to Washington 3-1. to Losing to Buffalo 2-1. to Hmm. Man, that Buffalo his shuts people down. Vancouver gave up six goals against Winnipeg, six to three, and then Calgary shellacked the Winnipeg Jets just yesterday. So interesting, six to three by Calgary. Nice win by the Flames. Good job. Let's keep moving. Blake Wheeler's leading the way, former Gopher and all that, and he, of course, he led the Wild with a skull chant. The Wild beat the Winnipeg Jets in that game last year, right before Minnesota ended up barely beating the Saints in the uh, divisional round in the NFC title game, or before the NFC title game anyway. Uh, check out Purple Mafia. Unfortunately, the show goes back to the Detroit game because I was unable to record this past week. But, uh, yeah, let's just talk about the uh, Winnipeg Jets. Obviously, still a dangerous team. A lot of people are picking them to win the Western Conference this year. They, oh, they still can. It doesn't matter if they're the eighth seed or the first seed. You can win the Western Conference. Uh, Nashville's proven it. The Los Angeles Kings have proven it. This team can win the Western Conference. Um, do I think they'll beat the Wild? in a matinee game on a Friday afternoon. <sighs> odds favor that, but I have a feeling the Wild are going to win. Um, I think the odds, like if you're going to make odds, Winnipeg's the favorite in this game. But I, I just have a, I, I have a good vibe. Like Minnesota plays well against Winnipeg at home, except in the playoffs. But no, actually we did win one of our home games last year, so give us credit there. Uh, the Wild were 0-3 in Winnipeg last year, but 1-1 one and one in the XL Energy Center, so at least we were a little better against them at home. Wild always play better at, at home against this team. I think Minnesota can win the game. Blake Wheeler, Mark Scheffel, these guys are definitely just stars. Kyle Connor, Dustin Bufflin is a rough and tough player, obviously. Uh, 14 assists for him over the year. Rough and tough and also a point producer as well. Uh, gets the job done. He gets power play assists. 10 of them on the year. Blake Wheeler, again, one of the stars of the team. He's a wily veteran now, but 25 points. He's been extremely viable for a long time. Their goaltending's not as good this year as it's been in other years. Brendan Lemieux, that guy's, yeah, the son of Claude Lemieux. Oh, similar player in that sense. Mm, I don't know. Nobody's really a big fan there. Jacob Truba. Okay. Um, I think Minnesota can beat the Winnipeg Jets. I think Minnesota beats the Jets. I, I'm expecting a score of 4 to 2, 4 to 3, something like that for Minnesota. Maybe even 5 to 3 with an empty netter type of thing, but I'll go with 4 to 2. In this game, I'm not going to go the high-scoring route. Um, I think the Wild kind of clamped down a bit after what happened against the uh, Ottawa Senators. That was dangerous. That was silly. I like the way the Wild play against the Jets in Excel Energy Center. I don't like the way the Wild play against the Jets over there uh, in Winnipeg. Up there in Winnipeg, I should say. Um, 4-2 to win for Minnesota. The most likely guy to score in the game will be... Who's going to score against the Jets? Ah, man, it's... <laughs> ah... I think Jared Spurgeon's going to score in the game. He'll get his 11th point. He's been in a little bit of a drought, but I do believe he will score on one of his little shots. Uh, his little shots. He's a, a, a one-timer type of goal. I am picking Jared Spurgeon as the most likely guy to score against the Winnipeg Jets. Arizona Coyotes. Minnesota Wild host the Arizona Coyotes on the 27th of November. Three-day break. Tuesday the 27th against the Coyotes. Clayton Keller leading the way. A team that doesn't score, but they... Shut people down. They are 29th in goals for and 2nd in goals against. 2nd. Anti Ranta has been really good, and a guy by the name of Darcy Kemper, that's right, has been, well, he's been in the net more than Anti Ranta, but Ranta's the better goalie. Um, Kemper started 11 games. Ranta started 9. It's kind of been a, a bit of a, a platoon there. Ranta is certainly better, though, again, about 93% save percentage, 210 goals against, where Kemper is 2.71. That's about Darcy Kemper, hot and cold. You never know what you're going to get. He's 4-5 and five on the year. Ranta's 5-4. and four. The problem with Arizona is they're not scoring at all. I mean, they're not scoring at all. Clayton Keller's got five goals. Clayton Keller, that's their number one, you know, guy. That's the guy they took in the high in the first round not that long ago. Derek Stepan was a nice addition. Stefan, Stepan, uh, only 10 points. He's got five goals uh, or six goals for him. The good part is they're deep in terms of you go, you go down the line, down to the third line. There's still guys that have six goals. So that's good. Brad Richardson, guys like that. Uh, but guys aren't setting people up. I mean, Omar... The defenseman, I mean, Oliver Ekman Larson, he's setting players up with his assists. He's got 10 assists, your defenseman, and he's getting the job done there. He's their top power play quarterback along with Alex Galinchuk. Um, but shoot, 
it's been uh, extremely disappointing for the Arizona Coyotes. I mean, Richard Panic, a guy who's been good in the past, Alex Galagoski, only seven points on the year. No excuse. Uh, the the uh, Arizona Coyotes, I almost call them the Cardinals. Geez, um, oh, two and two and three out of their last five. They lost or they beat Washington. That's impressive. Six to one loss to Detroit. Ugh. And they beat Nashville. They beat Washington and they beat Nashville. Yet they lose to Vegas, who's been awful. They lose to Detroit, who's, you know, rebuilding. And they lost to Boston, who's pretty good. But Nashville and Washington, okay. Um, Arizona's definitely a trap game. I mean, if you're going to have the little red arrows pointing at a game on the current schedule coming up, yeah, they're pointing right at this one. You, you, you talk about a trap game. This is the ultimate trap game. <laughs> you got to win this game. You got to score early. You have to score early if you're going to win this game. I'm picking Eric Stahl to be the most likely guy to score against this team. I, Eric Stahl's had some success against the Arizona Coyotes in the past, and I think that's the guy that's going to score in this one. 3-2, two, 2-1, two to one. just, but y- y- score early, please. You hope Darcy Kemper is in that in terms of, well, he's more vulnerable, but you hope also that there isn't the other side of it. That Darcy Kemper shuts the crap uh, down of his former team, shuts the shuts the clams down, and shuts out this wild team. I think the coach has the advantage over the goalie in this case. Not the goalie has the advantage over the team. That's my belief. That's my belief. I I don't know, but um, if Kemper's a net wild win for sure. If Rand is a net, count if uh, whew, boy count your blessings. Hope for the best. If Randy Rand is a net, not because he's this spectacular goalie. He's having a very good season though. Um. Arizona does not allow goals. They're second in the league in goals allowed, but they don't score for crap. That's the point. If, you're, if your defense is going to screw around and have lapses, the Wild lose this game for sure, if you're going to be lazy. You put the clamps down on this team and shut them out, or maybe win 3-1, to one, something like that, 3-1 to one with an empty net or 2-1 to one type of game. That's great, but Eric Stahl will be the most likely guy to score. I do pick the Wild to win this game. I don't want to sit here and pick the Arizona Coyotes to beat the Wild. It, it, oh, it can happen. It can absolutely happen if the Wilds screw around and they get lazy defensively because they're, oh, these guys never score anyway. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be surprised. The wrong place, wrong time. They scored four goals against the Washington Capitals on November 11th. That's insane. I mean, that is insane. That's a nice salute to the veterans from Arizona there. I mean, four, four to one. Yikes. I can't believe the Coyotes gave up uh, six goals against Detroit. That must have been Kemper. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't Ranta. That's that's Kemper. Um, or it was a mix with this other guy, Hunter Miska, who, who only who was in about half a game or no, just just one period. Maybe that was the game for Hunter Miska, poor guy. Their third goalie, basically their AHL goaltender there. Oh boy, what a what a tough situation because Ranta's missed some time and that's why Kemper's getting more minutes. I, I I'd want Ranta more than Kemper, quite honestly, in that if I'm the Coyotes. And you also want guys like Hayden Keller to kind of get going again. He's having a quiet, crappy season, and he's not winning in faceoffs. He's not winning in anything. So, Brad Richardson's definitely their top faceoff guy, even though Derek Stefan's taken more faceoffs. He's lost more. So, okay, let's move on. Columbus Blue Jackets, the Cobb, the Cobb, <laughs> the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yikes! First in the Metropolitan Division, and that's a Metroplex boy. That's a tough division. They always have been. Columbus Blue Jackets, of course, represent. The Union Army and the Civil Army, which a lot of people uh, don't know. but that, So that's kind of cool. The Union Army and the Civil War. So, cool. There's uh, That's the uh, Civil War reference in the NHL. The uh, NBA Civil War reference is the Charlotte Hornets, if you can believe that. That's the Confederate Army, if you can believe it. It's uh, It was a defensive strategy by that by the Civil War, late in the, or by the Confederate Army, late in the Civil War, kind of where they would swarm the uh, the other army. So, Interesting. They swarm, literally, like hornets. So, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Bob Brovsky, well, he's a free agent in the off season, and we'll see what happens. I hope he leaves Columbus, but, well, who knows? If he goes anywhere, maybe it's uh, Calgary, right? That's what the Flames keep talking about on the fireside chat. They, boy, they'd like to get him, but he's going to be expensive. Uh, he's doing a good job for the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's not doing a great job, though. He's been okay. Uh, Junis Coparuso is a guy that's not done done well, though he's 5-0. and Columbus ma- managed to score like crazy, even though his goals against average is awful. It's like they pick it up when he's in that. Uh, the Junis Cor- Corpusalo is uh, when he's in that. I'm probably mispronouncing that. But uh, Bravowski's been the uh, been the main dude. He's only 7-7. Seven and seven. He's 500 in that, which is weird. He had the backup. 
the team picks up its, picks up their scoring. A team that's physical, defensive, and can score at the same time. All the way down to Seth Jones has been kind of meh. But uh, Nick Felino, of course, the older and better brother with Marcus. Not that Mark, not that Marcus is a bad player. He's shown some serious skill. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. He just doesn't score like Nick Felino. Uh, Felino's no star, but he's good. 12 points on the year, 6 goals, 6 assists. We would take that from Marcus any day, and I think Marcus can do it. Uh, Panarin's been great, setting up other players mostly. Believe it or not, not so much on the power play. Only 4 power play assists. Cam Atkinson, when on his game, is the best player, I think, at least in the, in the goal scoring department. He does have 13 goals on the year. He had a very, very, very slow start to last season, but 2 years ago, when Minnesota and Columbus ruled the NHL in January, <laughs> in January, we all know how much that means, unfortunately, um, Cam Atkinson was killer to the wild. I think he will score. <laughs> if you're going to pick a guy who's most likely to score, Cam Atkinson always finds a way to score against Minnesota. He is a thorn in the side of Minnesota. This is in Columbus. I don't like the Wild's chances. They never play well against this team. I think the Columbus Blue Jackets win the game in regulation. 4-2, to 3-2, two, to two, whatever, something like that. Cam Atkinson will definitely score at some point in the game. Nick Felino and Marcus will get in a huge fight. No, I don't know. Maybe. I, I hope not, but maybe. Hope not for their mother's sake, I suppose. Uh, Nick Felino's only got nine penalty minutes on the year, though. He's not really looking for fights, where some people might be once in a while. Um, Pierre-Luc Dubois has ten goals on the year. He's second on the team. Panarin, though, he is a wonderful player. Wonderful player for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Years ago, he was involved in that uh, uh, Brandon Sod trade. Brendan Saad was valuable for Columbus, but not as good as Panarin. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> nice uh, deal for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, I think. Saad's Sa- good, but he's not that good. <laughs> he's really not that not, not that spectacular. Um, again, Minnesota's not going to win this game. Uh, Columbus is 3-2 and two in their last five. So everybody's kind of like 3-2 and two or 2-3 two and three lately. Minnesota 2-3, and three, unfortunately. The Columbus Blue Jackets lost to the Rangers at home, 5-4. to four. Ugh. They beat Dallas 2-1, crushed Florida 7-3, to three, beat Carolina convincingly 4-1, to one, and then lost to maybe the best team in the East, 4-2. to two. One of the best, them in Tampa Bay, Toronto, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. They'll be playing the Maple Leafs tomorrow night on Black Friday. So we'll see what happens at that. This game in particular is the 29th, Thursday the 29th. I didn't announce the date there, sorry. Uh, against the Blue Jackets. I do not think the Wild win the game against the Blue Jackets. The most likely guy to score for Minnesota against Columbus. We are definitely going to go with Parisi. That feels like a Parisi grind it out type of game. He'll get that gritty goal close to the net. Yeah, and uh, who knows? He'll, maybe he'll score against Winnipeg as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he scored in that one. But uh, Eric Stahl is going to score against Arizona. For sure. Uh, my, well, not for sure, but likely. And Dumba always does well against Ottawa, doesn't he? He had a game winner against Ottawa. Not uh, Was it a year ago, two years ago, and in, in overtime, and then two yesterday. That's interesting. So make a mental note of that. Dumba, Darkwing Dumba, always against Ottawa. <laughs> Dumba, right? But no, Parisi will score against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Minnesota goes 2-1 this week. 4-2 to two type of loss, unfortunately, to the Columbus Blue Jackets. The, the Wild just need to... You know, they need to play better against that team, and I don't think they will. So, let's get to the prospect conversation in this elongated show. So, well, let's get started. I'm surprised how long this show is already. I apologize if it's too long for you, but, nah, hey, enjoy yourself. Hey, if you're bored on Thanksgiving or you got nothing to do on Black Friday because you don't want to deal with that crap, hope you're enjoying this show at the time, or you got some, maybe it's snowing some wherever you live and you have to shovel or you still got to do some yard work before the, uh, City's done picking up uh, uh, leaves for the year, so yep, it's a good opportunity for you. Dmitry Sokolov has really, really picked it up of late, along with Sam Anas, who is correctly pronounced. I keep going back and forth with Anas. No, it's Sam Anas. He's really picked it up of late. The goals, the assists. He's now at 11 points in 17 games. He's fourth on the team overall after being way, way, way down there. Louis, Louis Belfidio has been outstanding defensively. He's really picking up the professional game. He's at five points. He added an assist this past week, so nothing spectacular in the points department, but he's out playing Curtis and Susi. Unfortunately, they're on the difference. They're on the opposite side, though. Of course, Paul Belpedio being a right shot and Susi left defenseman, so there's that. Susi, I would still think, is the top guy to get called up, despite the fact he is not doing so hot down there for uh, Iowa. He's not off to a great start. Four points on the year. The production, you don't really expect points, but The production, generally, has not been that good for the Viking Alberta native of uh, Carson Soucy. 
Louis Belpedio, again, doing very well. The Chicago, Illinois native, only 22 years old. I, I love Louis Belpedio. I think he's got a nice feature in the NHL. Uh, Kapo Kakanen got to three. That's right, three shutouts in a row. That's un. Believable! What an amazing start to his professional career. He's now been in six games. He did take the loss yesterday. He gave up two goals, including the shootout loss there, unfortunately, against the Milwaukee Admirals. It seems like that's all the Iowa Wild play lately is Milwaukee. But Kokkinen, 4-1-1 one, and one on the season. They call it a tie, but it's an overtime loss. <laughs> it's an overtime loss, unfortunately. Three shutouts, though, for Kapo Kokkinen. A sparkling .98 goals against average. Save percentage, almost 90 Seven, Kapo Kokkinen, the goalie of the future for Minnesota. At very least, a uh, very strong candidate to be the backup next year. I would not complain if the Wild re-sign Alex Stalock for another year or two. And yeah, sign him for two years, but like maybe a two-way deal where you can send him to the AHL and call up Kokkinen, depending on how things go. If Kokkinen deserves to be in the NHL, Kokkinen deserves to be in the NHL. So Alex Stalock has played many games in the AHL. I'm sure he'd rather be an AHL player than not playing hockey at all, unless another team offers him a backup job, a one-way contract in the NHL. But um, Alex Stalock, just love the guy and would not complain if he's here again next year because goalies take time to develop. Uh, Kokkinen's only 22 years of age at this stage. Andrew Hammond's 30. Goals against average, 2, 2.96. He's a classic AHL goalie who can be a backup goalie in the NHL as well. He had some good moments, obviously, and had some not-so-good moments. He's 7-3 and three for a pretty good 11-4 and four team there. 11-4-1 oh, and one officially for the Iowa Wild. Second in points in the entire AHL. This is a team that has not made the playoffs once since moving to Iowa. So, yeah. Jeez, a slight change of philosophy, huh? I like Paul Fenton. Can, can, can you tell that I like Paul Fenton? Can you tell that I like the philosophy change? Guys like Luke Cunning down there. And not just, oh, NHL, Luke Cunning, Luke, NHL, let's go. And, you know, there's even a possibility that Erickson Eck gets sent down there to, to develop. Uh, and then you have guys like Mason Shaw in Iowa rather than screwing around in juniors. It seems like in the past it was like they'd screw around, they'd have them screw around in juniors. So, NHL. No. <laughs> if you're going to take him, pull him from juniors, put him in the AHL and see what happens. And Mason Shaw, boy, 13 points. Point-producing son of a gun. 10 points so far. He has been awesome. Uh, Dmitry Sokolov has picked it up in a huge way after missing about six games, uh, which was frustrating. Again, he had three assists in those six games. He's had uh, three goals and three assists since then in five games. So that's great. Six points in five games for Dmitry Sokolov. Now nine points total in only 11 games. Sokolov, very productive down there. Only 20 years of age. Oh, yeah. Sokolov fans rejoice. He is uh, coming around. Ryan Murphy's been disappointing. Only eight points. He's not producing points, and his defense isn't that great, and this and that. Uh, Again, I don't know where to go with that one. Uh, Gerald Mayhew, Jerry Fitzgerald, both guys that are, you know, career minor leaguers doing a decent job. Uh, they're still, well, they're not career minor leaguers yet. They're still under 30, but uh, we'll see. They, they might be call-ups if things happen, but I'm guessing they're the kind of guys that aren't going to get too much time. Uh, on a fourth line in the NHL, but here and there, hopefully for their sake, um, at the end of the day, Kyle O'Reilly's leading the club with 19 points. He's like the Cam Atkinson. Well, not really. He's more like the the other guy. <laughs> I would want to go there. Well, who was it again? Uh, well, yeah, he's like the Panarin, I guess, for the uh, minute for the Iowa. If you want to compare them to Columbus, where Kyle Rowe is the Atkinson. He's got seven <clears throat> seven goals on the season and seven points, 14 overall in the 17 games. I was playing good, and I like the vision. Of uh, Paul Fenton, it's gonna you're beefing up that AHL team, building confidence. See, here's the thing: is Luke Cunning gonna develop on a team that's three and ten? You know, you know that type of team, a, a, a team that's like fourteen and thirty. Is he gonna develop confidence on a team that that can't do anything that just sucks every year? Okay, maybe they're not that bad, but they're like twenty nine and thirty, and they're just mediocre and. You know, or is he going to develop confidence and get better? Same with Mason Shaw on a team that's playing much better, a team that's good, a team that knows how to play hockey, veteran AHLers that can help these guys. I, I'm sure the veteran AHLers want to be NHLers, but there are guys that are willing to help and just they lead by example. Even if they don't open their mouth once, give one ounce of advice just by example how to play the game, <clears throat> and that can help these players so much. And that's why I love this uh, different vision. Paul Fenton. I think it leads to a much more successful and elongated success for 
the Minnesota Wild and other NHL franchises when you have a general manager with this type of vision. Uh, Paul Fenton's more my type of GM than Chuck Fletcher, if you can't tell. I'm constantly, religiously, constantly, religiously following the AHL for that reason because I want these guys to develop properly. I want to see Sokolov make it to the NHL and be awesome and be an awesome player. Conan, guys like that. Louis Belpedio. These are guys that could be good players for the Wild. And, of course, Kapo Kukkonen, who... The goaltender is slightly important, I gotta think. So let's continue forward here. Looking at the college and juniors and such, Ivan Ladnia, 85th overall pick in the third round, 19 years of age at this point for Niagara. He's having some success. He's producing. I think he's doing a little better. He's doing better than last year than he did with uh, Erie Otters, who aren't real good. Niagara Ice Dogs, seven goals and 23 total points so far for him in the OHL. That's a guy, again, like I've said on every show, he did nothing in the AHL last year when he was called up. Hopefully he can get it going at some point. <clears throat> I forget if Brandon Duhame did anything last week for Providence. Uh, yeah, he's at eight points. He's been doing okay. Five goals in the year. He is scoring goals. He had a couple goals last week. That's right. Providence, eight points so far in the 11 games for Brandon Duhame. He was 2016. He was a fourth-round pick in 2016. And again, so many draft picks given away by uh, Mr. Fletcher over the years. Sadek actually had a goal last week for the Minnesota Gophers in, uh, you know, not a great weekend against the uh, against St. Lawrence. I don't know what that was. I mean, it's St. Lawrence, folks. They're not they're not good. So I'm not sure what that was all about at the end of the day. So Sadek finally getting his first goal of the season, <laughs> four points for the senior defenseman for Minnesota. Again, right shot. So okay, if you want your right shot, I don't know if Sadek's going to make it to the NHL, but he'll. Probably be in the AHL at the end of the year. I keep talking about that, but nothing too exciting to say about him, unfortunately. Uh, again, that's pretty much where I'm going to go at this point. I mean, Sam Hentges had that awesome start, but he hasn't done much since, unfortunately, for the St. Cloud State Huskies. That's a little disappointing at the end of the day, I think. His, his plus minus hasn't suffered at all. That's the good part. He's still, he's a plus 11 so far, is Sam Hentges, the... Uh, Freshman for St. Cloud State. He's done a great job uh, for them, generally speaking, but stuck at six points, unfortunately, after that crazy start to his collegiate career. Quick drop-off, though, unfortunately. Hope he can get it going again. Jack McBain added his first collegiate goal. He had an assist a couple of weeks ago. Jack McBain, who was the third-round pick for Minnesota, 63rd overall this past year. His uh, first goal ever for Boston College. Two points so far in the six games he's played. As of course, he missed the first couple of games, which was quite unfortunate. We'll look at some of these other guys. Uh, D- Damian Giroux, I've, I, I like this guy's production so far. Super duper young, only 18 years of age. Already have 17 points. Eight of them goals for the uh, Signal Spirit in 21 games. Not a bad start to his collegiate career for a guy that's uh, obviously got many, 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 many years ahead of him. I like his, I, I like his chances at some point down the line. Uh, with that, well, last one, we'll look at is Nick Sweeney. Yeah, he's still producing well. He had, a, he had a decent week last week, picking up a couple points, actually two goals, if you can believe it, for Minnesota Duluth after being fairly quiet to start off the season, but a two-goal game the past weekend for Duluth. Four goals on the season, now nine total points for the sophomore, Nick Sweeney. Out of Lakeville, Minnesota, seventh round pick. Again, Fletcher, that's where Fletcher, I, I like what Fletcher did, but of course, the Fenton regime, which again does have some Fletcher rem, uh, remnants. Most of the scouts still actually employed by Minnesota. Sam Hench is another fairly exciting seventh round pick, I think, who's doing a good job for St. Cloud State. Again, a good team around him. There's no doubt about that. They're pretty much number one in the country. Nick Sweeney, the national champions. And yeah, he is, he's factoring in as well. A seventh rounder that I like very much. And we've talked about Dimitri Sokolov a million times. And I brought him up just recently. Sadik, not too exciting, but we'll see. I don't know what's going to happen with the Jack Sadik long term. Um, then I already talked about Susie, all those other guys. So I think that's about it. Mm, one, one last one, Kavanaugh. Yeah, he's having an awesome season in, 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 in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League anyway. 15 goals, 32 points, only 24 games there uh, for the Moncon Wildcats. He is producing great. Again, he is in the, he's in North America already, a Russian who's got a nice future. Remember, he was hurt. He was he was he was hurt last year, and that uh, hurt hurt his chances. Uh, otherwise, he might have been a first round pick. So uh, Fletch, uh, Fletcher, <laughs> I keep saying Fletcher. I even said Risebrow on last show. That was crazy when I meant Ben Fletcher. But Fenton and Co. May have a gem here in Kovanov. So maybe three excellent Russians. The only one who's not done a whole lot so far is 
Andre Svetlakov. He has not produced hardly anything so far in the KHL. So we'll see. Maybe in a couple of years. Still young and still got still got a chance. Um, so that's kind of is what it is there. Uh, Sokolov, Kaprizov, and Kovanov. Whew, those three guys might end up being might end up bringing a real nice Russian taste to Minnesota. And we're talking some serious scoring if they translate to the NHL. What they what they've been doing uh, at their level so far. Dmitry Sokolov, the closest at the moment because he's already in the AHL, but I don't think Sokolov gets a sniff in the NHL this year. Maybe a game or two, but that's it. Um, next year, I think, I think the I think the door is starting to creep open a little bit for him. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, the fact he's producing and the coach, the coaches love him down there in the AHL. That's where Dmitry Sokolov has me feeling really good. Mason Shaw, yep, the coach, uh, uh, Tim Army down there, very very uh, happy. Very pleased with Sokolov's progress. Uh, he, he still needs to improve his conditioning, but it's gotten better. Uh, his competitiveness and his love of the game is, is showing, and that's where Tim Army has been uh, very impressed with Dmitry Sokolov so far. It's a shame he missed six games, but, well, he's making up for it nicely. With that, I'm going to call it a show. I'm going to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to also give you the contract details. Contract. Contact details. At Brave the Wild is the Twitter account. At Brave the Wild. want to thank Vince Germano and Tanae Brown for retweeting the most recent show. You guys are great. Thank you so much for retweeting the show on Twitter. At Brave the Wild. Do tweet me anytime. Talk anything wild. Anything wild. Even go for hockey. I don't mind it. Um, wild prospects. I'd love to talk about them with you if you if you would like. Um <clears throat> Also, the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash brave the wild, facebook.com forward slash brave the wild. Thanks again for joining that page. If you could give that a follow, like, whatever they call it, like, follow, join it, conversate with me, talk about anything you want. Minnesota Wild, Wild Prospects, heck, even comment about other players in the NHL if you want to. It's always, uh, always welcome. Any type of hockey conversation is welcome on Brave the Wild. Thank you again. God bless. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Have a safe. <laughs> Safe Black Friday if you're crazy. Stick to online if you're smart. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Whatever. It's it's your choice. You're going to do what you're going to do. Nobody's going to listen to you, especially some guy on a podcast that you don't even know, right? You, maybe you know him a little bit, but you don't know him that well. That type of thing who lives maybe 20, 30, or 200 miles from you or more. God bless, though. <laughs> Whatever it is, enjoy yourself. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you in about a week or so. Mm-hmm.